now let's go back over and look at our behavior again. Remember, there are three flavors of behavior. There is the activity diagrams that we looked at a couple. Let's look at one more. Uh, let's see. How about provide power? Or operate the vehicle. Let's look at that one. I click on the diagram symbol. It opens up the diagram in the center panel. Here now we've used swim lanes to indicate the actors that are performing the actions. So here my driver named Tom is performing changing the gear on the automobile and mashing on the accelerator, changing the accelerator position to go to accelerate the vehicle. Over here, the automobile then, here is a what's called a call behavior action. That's different than this regular action. Notice it's got a little rake symbol in the lower right hand corner. That's a visual clue that this is really invoking or calling another activity diagram. So this is the way in SystemL, you don't have the idea of expanding a box and decomposing it. You have the idea of you invoke or call another diagram. It's logically the similar type thing, except you can have alternatives. So I could have five different alternative decompositions rather than just one. So this one, if I click on it, it's going to launch that other diagram, I hope. There we go. There's my other diagram. So this one, I'm providing power. So here, I've got activity parameters, fuel, air, the accelerator command, and the gear selected uh, uh, parameter coming into these particular actions. So I'm going to dispense my fuel into my control fuel air mixture function or action. So it's taking air in the accelerator command, the fuel, and outputting a fuel-air mixture to my generate torque action, which is going to output torque into the amplify and distribute torque that's going to output it torque to my left rear wheel and tire and my right rear wheel and tire. Okay? So this, again, is another activity diagram for showing a um, action flow based behavior. Where you define actions, you link them together with these control flows, and then you associate the data objects the actions are either taking in or producing. So this is one type of behavior. Another type of behavior in SysML I come back over to my sidebar. Let's go back to the package called Sequence Interaction Diagram. If I click on that package to expand it, you'll notice that that package has one diagram in there, SD for Sequence Diagram. If I click on it, it's going to open up that diagram in the center pane. Here, Okay, now you notice here, this morning when I was playing around, I moved some data around. Remember I told you that the elements should be owned by one package, but they can be reused in any package. So here, it's showing us that we've got this qualified name, the model name, the package name, then the element name, ignition on. If I highlight this, Come over to my, over here, to my control sidebar. You'll see I've got under the graphics panel, I've got a show full symbol number. That's that qualified name. So if I uncheck it, it hides all that extra information that I don't need to know on the diagram. So let me just go ahead and hide it for each one of these. Since I moved the data around to a different package this morning, and I forgot to come over and check, uncheck the box. There we go. Now we've got a what's called a sequence or interaction diagram. 
The rectangle is a lifeline. The driver object in this dotted line is time flowing top to bottom. It's the lifeline of that object. Here's my automobile system and its lifeline. This little rectangle on the lifeline is called over here an execution specification. It's just a symbol to kind of let the user know that there's some action allocated to the driver that's actually performing some unit of work and now putting this ignition on signal. So the driver performs some action. It outputs ignition on this arrow with the open arrow head, which is a asynchronous message. In other words, asynchronous means I send it, but I don't wait for it to complete. I keep on processing. Where this solid arrowhead is a synchronous message. So when I send the start engine signal, I have to wait for its completion. It's a synchronous message. So here, I, in this diagram, we want to emphasize the key events being exchanged between these two players, these two actors. So we're going to have ignition on from the driver to the automobile. Once it gets that signal, it's going to execute an activity called start engine. Once the engine started, then we come into what's called a, a fragment, a parallel fragment, and you divide it by these dotted lines into segments for concurrency. So this is showing you guys that I've got one, two, three parallel activities going in parallel. I'm providing power to the vehicle. Once the engine is started, I'm continually pro providing power. I'm also having the operator, the driver, turn the vehicle steering wheel to turn the vehicle left or right. And also, then at some point, I could have the operator turn off the ignition with this signal here, and then once that signal is received, then it executes the stop engine action to stop the engine. So three parallel activities. Now, how do I create a parallel region? You hide the symbol, use your Ryan pop-up menu, and we use our swim lane mechanism you see, there's three swim lanes. I could have named it. I chose not to, and I could have colored it. There's three of them. If I add one more, one, two, three, there we are. There's our four regions. So these are called regions, and, and the dotted line means they're in parallel. So I can show concurrent or parallel processing here. Now, so this is an alternative behavior diagram to the activity diagram. The activity diagram is showing basically the actions that are going on inside these little uh, rectangles here. Okay, like start engine would be an activity diagram. What actions occur when you say when you start the engine or provide power? And if you remember, we have an activity diagram for provide power. So if I come back over and let's go look at our sequence diagram, we'll see, there it is there. Remember, if we expand it, we can see the symbols. Excuse me. So here is a lifeline. That's this box with the, with the dotted dashed line. So there is two lifelines defined. You notice that the lifeline is called Life 1 and Life 2. I just choose an arbitrary name. Let me show you what happens if I want to add a new lifeline. I'll show you how that works real quick. So let's see. Let's click down here in the control sidebar to get our symbol palette. There's the lifeline symbol. If I want to add a third lifeline here. Click on it. Come over here and click. Now, in Cradle, remember, everything is objects in SysML. Objects calling objects calling objects. So the lifeline is going to be an object. So I can name it whatever I choose to. I'm going to call this one Lloyd, spelled the way we do in the U.S. here, versus the British spelling. 
say OK. So there's Lloyd. Now you notice what I did was I'm rapid prototyping. I'm trying to think about logic for this diagram. I don't want to take time to really define, go pick a block to do for Lloyd. Let's go back and I'll show you what happened there. Let's rename this lifeline. What I skipped over that will be in the help information for you guys to look at. Here's the lifeline name. That's like a rapid prototyping term. So I can put whatever I want to that makes sense to me, the designer, at the time I'm doing this. But here is where I can specify a referenced element, another object. So a lifeline is represented by an actor or a block. So if I click on this dot, dot, dot over here beside referenced element, then here are all my actors and my blocks that I've got defined in my model so far. Here's a battery. That's probably not a good engineering choice, but I'm going to pick it anyway. So now, lifeline named Lloyd, my rapid prototyping name, is really going to be a battery. So if I say OK, over here, remember on the sidebar, down here under graphics, show full symbol number, remember? But there's also one here called hide the replacement name. So if I click that, it hides that reference element block called battery and just shows the the uh, lifeline name. If I unclick it, it shows me the actual block that that lifeline is representing. So it allows me, if I'm trying to do a what if analysis real quickly, I can use these names that mean something to me and my team and then later come back and tie it to a specific live object in the database. Real handy. Okay, now I was going to show you that provide power is an actual object in the database. And ignition on is an actual object in the database. So the idea here is I want to reuse these objects on different contexts, different diagrams. So I've got a consistent model referencing the same reusable information. I define the information once and reuse it. So if I come back over to my sidebar to get my packages, now this is under the uh, excuse me behavior, remember? It's under the sequence interaction diagram. It's under, I've only got one of these diagrams, so if I expand it, then here are the symbols I've put to find. The asynchronous message, that is the open arrowhead message. The synchronous message is the closed arrowhead. So these are usually activities or actions, procedure calls. And these are using signals. OK? And the lifeline then shows me the name of the lifeline, that, that rapid prototyping name, but also the specific block or, active or, acti block or actor that that lifeline is representing. Now, let's come back over here and expand into the message. Well, let's look at ignition on. So come back over here. That's an open arrowhead, so that means this is a asynchronous message. So if I look at asynchronous message, here's the name of the messages. And these, again, have a rapid prototyping name I can use, and then later I can specify a specific element. So message one was the one I created when I'm doing my what if analysis, and then I referenced a signal, ignition on. So there is how I associated with a cross reference link that this signal is flowing across that message arrow. If you want to check it with a rename option, you highlight the ignition on, do a right-hand pop-up menu, rename. So there's the name of the message, the asynchronous message that I just made up. You can put as detailed as you want to or as simple as you need to. 
Here is the reference element is the actual object you want to have if you were executing in a simulation this model, then this would be the actual object that got would get executed, not this up here. So here's my mission on, and it is a stereotype signal. Okay? All right. So this is a second type of behavior where we're trying to show the key events or messages that are generated and exchanged between activities and the actions. Now, so this over here, let's, so we looked at a signal. Let's look at uh, provide power. Let's see what that is. Let's come back over to our sidebar. So this here is a message. It is a synchronous message. So let's go into this synchronous message folder because it's got a solid arrowhead. It's called provide power. So let's look, find provide power. Uh, there it is right there. You see it's an activity. If I expand it, you'll see this activity is associated with this message. That's this black line here, this arrow, that's the message. The activity is what is being invoked or called. It's defined in this package, and it's also related to a state machine we'll come to next. So let's highlight this guy, this activity provide power. Let's do a right hand pop-up menu and do links. I want to see everything that's linked to that particular activity. So there's everything related to that activity. So there's a diagram. That's the sequence diagram I'm on. Okay. And there's the package. The containment is the only package. The containment reuse is the reuse package. Packages that reuse that guy. So containment is the older of this particular uh, activity, where containment reuse is just reusing it. And then entry behavior will come to next as part of the uh, activity uh, state machine.